Hallelujah. Well, I know that there are a lot of people here today that um, that don't know us, but we're the Currys. Uh, we're pastors of Life Changers, but uh, I'm Warren, and this is my wife, Tierra. And, um, and we've been together 28 years, been married 22 of those 28. We have six children, uh, ranging in ages from 25 uh, is our oldest um, to nine. Amen. Don't, don't ask no questions. <clears throat> I could just tell you this, kids, don't try this at home, amen, and uh, where you have that big of a gap, 17, 18 years, it's not for the faint at heart, <laughs> and uh, and we love children, uh, all of our, you know, we have a big family, uh, you know, six children, three dogs, um, our house is loud, um, you never know, a dull moment, it's just full of life, oh, life never. happens there, <laughs> never ever a dull moment, uh, we love children, uh, been involved in uh, ministering to families, youth, children, um, literally for decades. Uh, prior to our relocation to Ohio, uh, we owned a state licensed child care center for six years, um, cared for children, cared for their families, uh, so on and so forth. We just, we love children and we have seen uh, some of the best that life has to offer uh, for children. <clears throat> and we've also um, unfortunately seen some of the worst um, that that uh, life has to offer. Uh, we have been on the end where we have had to visit uh, children, <clears throat> I'm talking about kids, nine, ten years old in detention centers, um, in jail, and what they call juvie. Uh, we have, uh, you know, visited, uh, you know, when we had our daycare center, <clears throat> uh, we had uh, kids all as, as young as 14 years old who had their children enrolled uh, in our center. They were the parent. Uh, we have also unfortunately had to bury a number of children, people that who have been part of our congregation or congregations that we have served uh, in throughout the years and uh, walked alongside families in those very, very personal and painful seasons. And one thing that we kind of principled, we extracted or pulled out of uh, all of those seasons, both good and bad, is this one thing, that children learn what they live. <clears throat> children learn what they live. Um, if a child turns out to be um, a stellar example of just an outstanding human being, uh, that was not by accident. Somebody was intentional about forming that child, loving that child, correcting that child, giving boundaries to that child, providing for that child. And it starts at this age where these children are, you know, uh, you know, responsible, productive citizens and adults uh, doesn't start or happen as they get older. It happens now in their formative years. And so, you know, this, which is why we had such a passion for early childhood education, because we understand that, you know, from birth to five years old are some of the most uh, important years in a child's life. Amen. And, uh, and then likewise, or conversely, you know, children that grow up to be, um, you know, unfortunately menaces to society, uh, it doesn't just happen by accident. They learn those things someplace. And one of the things that we have to understand is our responsibility as parents and or guardians is that we have to intentionally, sacrificially, and willingly train up God, these children, and the scripture says, in the way that God wants them to go so that they, when they become of age or they become full grown, they will not depart from their training. We realize that there are instances, come on somebody, where kids as they age, they just, you know, they buck all their teaching, right? They just act like, you know, the home that you raised them in, that they, that they didn't even come from that kind of loving, stable, nurturing environment. And so, you know, we don't, obviously this is not a, uh, a wide generalization, but it's just a reality of what we've seen in so many instances where um, if you train children intentionally with good things and you form godly character in them, uh, they will they will grow up to be um, good good people, and if you don't, um, you know you are somebody's going to train them. So it might as well be you. 
You can train your children or you can allow society to train them. You can allow culture to train them. You can allow the school system, media, social media to train them. Somebody's going to train them whether you do it or not, so you might as well be the one that does it. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Amen. Children, both young and old, they always learn from the environments that they live in. So we have to make sure that the environment that we are uh, cultivating in our homes, the environment that we're cultivating through our lives, that we are cultivating an environment for our children yeah. to thrive, yeah. for our babies to thrive, just remembering that they pick up our habits and they pick up the both the good and the bad habits. Yes, they do. They catch all our little blind sides, <laughs> all our little blind spots. They pick up on our traits and our character, uh, our characteristics. And yeah. so we have to be very, very mindful of the environment that we are uh, raising our babies in. And parenting is not easy, is it? It is not. No, uh, it's not easy, um, but it is so worth it, um, especially when you consider uh, sometimes your own background, how you were raised. Yeah where you come from, uh, my wife and I, you know, we don't um, toot our own horn at all because uh, kids are still going to be kids. Come on, somebody. Oh, I don't care what you put in them. Hey, man, you listen, you go somewhere, you can feed them. I, we remind our kids all the time, listen, we have fed you multiple times a day for 14, 15, 16 years. How dare you go to this public event that we are at and be like, Dad, I'm hungry. <laughs> like we never, ever, ever feed you. We feed you really well, sir. Ma'am, we take very good care of you. Why would you put us on blast like that? Or be staring at people, fool, like, you, come on. Listen, they say it'll be your own kids, okay? They're going to call you out. <laughs> Jesus, and so we understand that parenting is not easy um, you know, but we have good kids, um, and it has been because of the intentionality of how we have intentionally formed them, shaped their character, corrected them. Amen? Can I just say this? I know that people have different parenting styles. Spanking your child is not only okay, it is necessary. <clears throat> because, listen... It is an act of love to spank your child. You, I understand. Come on, all the books, we got them all. The timeout corner, all the philosophies. We, we, listen, we've got all of it. Hey Amen. We don't we didn't just raise our kids. We help raise other people's children as well. So we understand all of that. Hey Amen. There were times in our daycare where we wanted to whoop some of those kids. <laughs> But I didn't want to end up on the 6 o'clock evening news. Hey, man. But it is an act of love to correct your children, and we have to be willing to do that and everything in between to ensure that they are, um, that the character that God has intended for their life is formed and that his plans for their life comes to pass. Hey, man. It is challenging, y'all, but it is so, so worth it. And one of the things that, you know, that we've done, that many of you have done, and especially my wife, she has really helped me to become a better parent. Um, I'm the oldest of four. My wife is the middle child of three. And, uh, you know, and men and women, you know, we have different parenting styles. Come on, somebody. And, uh, you know, a lot of dads, come on, we be... You know, we're the, we're the good cop. Y'all got good cop, bad cop in your home? And I'm the good cop. I'm the fun guy. Amen. I just, you know, you, you twirling them around and you just do dangerous Chasing stuff. Chasing them through the house with the chicken it's, that you're trying to cook. Don't be telling all our yeah. business. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Chasing them through the house. You're talking about one Thanksgiving, you, you, I was preparing the turkey, the raw meat, and, and you got the cavity, and I just... I just stuck my hand in the cavity, and I just saw the little wings. I just started chasing them around the house, and my wife about to had a nervous wreck because she was like, you are cross-contaminating. <laughs> all that poultry juice all over. And, I'm, and, I, and me and we think, well, well, we can clean it up. You know what I'm saying? 
And uh, but uh, we have balanced each other. But she has really helped me to become a very solid, um, solid parent um, that provides structure. Um, kids need stability. Um, they need predictability. They need to know that mom or dad, hey, you may travel or you may just whatever. But, you know, dad, when you get paid on Fridays, you're coming home. We won't, you know, you're not going to be gone till Monday with your check and come back and there's nothing right. So they need predictability. There's so many things that they need which helps to form their worldview as, as tiny followers of Christ. We have an earnest responsibility to not just raise our children in education, to raise them to be excellent professionals, but to raise them in the Lord. That is our responsibility, and we can't train them or raise them or teach them in, uh, if we're ignorant in certain areas. So we need to train them, but also yield ourselves to be trained and yield ourselves. Because y'all know that many of us, as you have grown and matured and gotten older in life, you have realized, all of us have, that there have been some deficiencies in our development. And you know what I have found out? That that is okay. As long as you are willing, even at whatever age that you're at, to do the hard work of rolling up your sleeves to make sure that you get the therapy that you need, come on, that you lay down trauma, generational trauma, that whatever, whatever it is that you need so that you can be emotionally stable, financially stable, relationally stable, so that your kids, right, who will learn from your example, you are the example in the home. Amen? Hallelujah. Whether you realize it or not, and a lot of times parents, I, I've never understood, you know, we've been in ministry in so many different contexts, uh, large churches, you know, churches our size and medium-sized church, small churches, and I've never understood, we've never understood why parents try to uh, act or be one way at home and then be one way at church. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but kids tell all your business oh, I love it. when they ask for prayer in kids' ministry because their mama cussed them out this morning on the way to church. Pastor Tierra, can you pray for me? Why Why you need prayer, baby? Because my mama called me a little MF, and she slapped me on the way to church this morning. And we'd be like, Jesus. And then you come in and be talking about, what a mighty God. We, no, no, we ain't going to do that. Because they learn, as an example, when we blow it, to also be mature enough to go back even to our children and say, Mommy and Daddy blew it. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have talked to you that way. Um, I shouldn't have, you know, called you out of your name. I shouldn't have done any of those things. Why is that important? It's important because you don't want to injure your child, but it's also important because children learn what they live. They learn what they live. If you do it to them, they're going to naturally by default think that it's okay to do it to their children um, in, the, in, the, in the years to come. Amen? Hallelujah. And one of the things that uh, my wife, she has every, every parenting book known to man. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Husband, y'all ever take any of them breathing classes when you was having babies, the Lamaze classes, or any of them other kind of classes where, you know, you just, she's staring through me. Don't be staring through me right now. Where I get books because we need to learn <laughs> as parents. We and do. We need to grow. Yes. And we need to evolve. And just because our parents raised us one way, we have the responsibility. Yeah as parents to see how am I going to raise the child that the Lord has given me because the Lord didn't give this baby that you have to anybody else right. the Lord gave the baby to you so it's up to you to find out Lord what way do I have peace about raising this baby that you gave me and so we need to raise our children in the Lord Amen. using resources yes. that we have and that we uh, need to get so Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, one book that I really love. I'm just gonna throw it, throw it out Come there. On. It's called Instructions in Righteousness. Hey, that thing is this thick, y'all, and I can just tell you it this: it's that thick. I, because I, this is no exaggeration. It is really thick. thick. 
It's very, it might be thicker. And all I know is if I come home and I see that book on our dining room table, I know it's about to be an interesting week. Because <laughs> somebody did something they ain't had no business doing. And everybody about to be on the I'm about to be scared. I don't know. Have, man, if you're married, has this ever been, maybe it's just me. Like if your wife raises their voice in a certain way, it strikes fear in your heart like your mama's voice. And I just be like, I better, I better go <coughs> sit myself down somewhere. And uh, cause I don't want to get in trouble. Stop Amen. It. Hallelujah. Stop it. <laughs> this book is a really good resource. Instructions in righteousness. It it's is a, a great resource for Christian parents who are uh, uh, endeavoring to raise their babies. It gives you scriptures and it gives you examples thing, examples of things to do if a child if your child lies or if your child is disobedient. It gives you different examples that you can just reference. You reference the book and then you pray about what you have peace about Amen. in your home. So raising <laughs> our babies. The word. In uh, Proverbs 22 <laughs> and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go so that when they grow old, they will not depart from it. And so our children need to know the word of God. They need to know what God has said, uh, what his, uh, what, what the scriptures lay out for children. One of our favorites is in Ephesians where we tell our children that the Lord... <laughs> If we if we call if we could video because there was a video camera we could call our yes. twenty five year old yes. that lives in Los Angeles right now yes. and ask him all of the because that the scripture she just read train up a child the word train in the Hebrew the Old Testament was written in Hebrew it literally means to drill into him yes. like a sergeant yes practice over Amen. and over and over if and we, over if we call that boy right now and ask him to. Sing the song of Ephesians uh, 6. Children, obey your parents. I promise you, Caleb will be able to do it. Amen. That's the first thing. He don't always obey now because, you know, they get a little older now, you know, so you have to you have to threaten them with financial sanctions. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) When you can when you when they don't succumb to spankings no more. There's other ways. I ain't going to say nothing on camera. Y'all talk to me off camera. I'll give you some other ways. Amen. (laughs) That you can ensure that God's will is done in their life when they don't listen. Hallelujah. We have to establish scripture as the authority in our home. Amen. Scripture, the word of God. So training them and knowing what season they're in as they are babies. I used to always play a prayer of Jabez CD every night. And every even night. our 20 year olds that are in the back this morning serving in Kingdom Kids, uh, Rachel just recently she said, Mom, why did you have to play that CD over and over again? I can't cannot get these songs out of my head. For years. Why? Yeah. For years I played that CD at night because it was a CD filled with the word of filled God. With God's word. And that yeah. song uh that song just just uh, just ex- expanded Jesus. on the inside of them. Jesus. And they remember those songs. We have to instill the word yeah. uh, in creative measures uh, to our children so that they have the word of God yeah. in their lives through the CDs, through uh, videos, Veggie Tales, other Christian, uh, you know, videos. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so we have to raise them and making sure that they know their scriptures. And one of the things that I also think is important is that, especially if you have multiple children, you don't raise them all the same way. Because yeah. yeah. each one of them have their own unique personality, their they own do. unique character, their own unique gifting, and their own unique calling. And you have to get one of the things that my wife, uh, you know, she when we were preparing for this, that she, um, you know, mentioned or alluded to is the fact that when you start to have children, you don't get a book at the hospital no. that they give you and be like, hey, this is how to raise your no. child. You know how to get a little bag. None of bag. us are given a parenting manual. Yeah. None of us. And so you really need wisdom from God on how to raise this particular child. There were some children in our household, I won't name any names, that were a little bit more strong-willed than others. I have learned that we have learned that strong-willed children are not necessarily trying to be rebellious. We've learned that they actually have a leadership gift, and that gift needs to be honed and developed. They need autonomy and freedom to make decisions and not just smash And because you're going to do what I tell you to do. They're probably not going to do what you tell them to do because it's innately in them. God put a gift in them to lead. Right. And so you have to learn how to train that child 
And sometimes those children are the subject of more spankings than your other child who you could just shoot a look, a certain look in a certain direction, and they start crying on the spot. Amen? And so, you know, we, uh, we haven't had to do this in a really long time. And uh, praise God that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Well, we would do community spankings. Like if a kid, you know, like somebody breaks something or takes something in the house, we'd be like, listen, there's only one ghost in this house. It's the Holy Ghost. Only one. And he don't steal. Okay? Your mother and I didn't take it. We didn't eat it. So that means one of y'all did. And since nobody knows who did it, we're going to take all of y'all up. What are we doing? We're squeezing the informant. It's wisdom. Because somebody is going to be like, Mom, Dad, can I talk to you? Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> Let's go into the interrogation room. And I need you to turn, be the state's witness, and be our star witness for the prosecutor. Because somebody knows something. You know something. And I realize you don't want to snitch, but you're going to tell us if not everybody <laughs> is going to reap these consequences. So you just have to learn as you raise your children in the Lord that you have to raise them according to God's patterns for their life. Amen. Amen. Another thing that we need to do is to set healthy examples. Say that again, baby. We need to set healthy examples, remembering that our babies are going to imitate us. They're going to imitate what they see. And so uh, we always hear the do as I say not as I do, but that's not going to work. Yeah. You can't just tell them things now in this day and age. Because if you are living a, a, in a way that is not pleasing to the Lord, if you are doing things and not living your best life, your best life is in Christ, uh, uh, really uh, honing in on what God says and what he's taught us in his word, you're not living your best life. So we have to make sure that as we're raising our children, that we are making worship, that we are making prayer, that we are making going to church, um, just stable foundations in our homes for our baby so that we know what to do and what to say, what not to do and what not to say. Yeah, and live lives authentically and to be truthful about who you are, right? Or your strengths, your uh, your propensities for weakness, um, not telling your children all your business because there are some conversations that aren't age appropriate and they don't need to know everything. I know that your child is your best friend. Y'all dress alike and y'all do your little dances on TikTok. But can I tell you something? It can be very devastating and debilitating for their growth and development if you share too much with them too fast. Yeah. Just they're just their their makeup sometimes is not ready for certain conversations to have. I know you want to be truthful and what they say, you know, share my truth and all that kind of stuff. But listen here, you better get a, a, a understanding of God's word and wisdom from seasoned families yeah. and and parents and people who have who have been successful at raising children. I was uh, this past week, uh, my uh, our pastor, our spiritual father spiritual mother, the Dudleys, many of you know them, they were at our, uh, <clears throat> at our uh, marriage retreat this past week, uh, or this past week, uh, this past year, and back in June, where Apostle Michael, his mom passed away at 89 years old, and so I, and she lived in Greenville, North Carolina, I flew down uh, for the funeral to support them, and, uh, and I had met her before years ago when we served in their church, but had no idea that this woman who had a sixth grade education who had been widowed twice, raised her own four children. There were extended family members who their mothers or significant, you know, father, whoever passed away. She raised their children, and she raised other people. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, my God. You know, the example that she, had, that she set for so many and how all of these people came out to this funeral to celebrate this woman's life, a woman of godly character and nobility, talking about how her influence um, and her impact upon their life shaped them for, for, uh, for decades to come. And she had a sixth grade education. And they said, we never understood how grandma, who weren't as halfway as educated as the majority of us, was able to give us guidance and insight into our lives when we didn't know, and that's because grandma walked with the Lord. 
and grandma had wisdom. You know, they may have had knowledge, but you need wisdom to know how to apply the knowledge. And so it's just, it's just imperative. It is so, so, so imperative uh, and so important that you live a, a life of truth and authenticity um, as people and just be a, a healthy example um, to your children. Amen. You know, none of us are going to be perfect and none of us are going to be right all the time. You, you understand that? But you have to be an example, even when that, even when you think you're doing things in private, like your kids may not see it, but the Lord's eyes do. And you can open spiritual doors and things can happen in your life and in your children's lives because you're trying to tiptoe through the tulips and do things in a, in a, a surreptitious or sneaky fashion versus just walking and living up right before the Lord. And so uh, it is important because children learn what they live that we also set healthy um, examples as well. Amen. And then our final thing is that uh, that we, you know, have seen in our own lives and in the lives of children that we've been around uh, for years is that it is important to seek Christ-centered community. Uh, you guys have ho heard the old adage or the old African proverb uh, that it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, can we, the Currys tell you something? It takes the right kind of village. Right it don't take any village. Yeah. It takes the right kind. Because God has given us instruction and admonition to raise our children in the Lord. Yeah. And everyone that's a part of our village, sometimes they're not in the Lord. And that's okay because that's the decision that they make for their own, their own lives and their own families. Amen. But you can't be the godparent to my child if you, there's no godliness about you. That's just not, that's just common sense. It's not, it's not cute when you have a person that you might have a relationship or friendship with and they are living a raunchy, crazy whatever kind of lifestyle, and you'd be like, because we've been friends since the fourth grade, I'm going to make them my baby's godparent. That's, you're asking for trouble because that you're, 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 you are entrusting a measure and level of authority in your child's life, and so don't think that it is surprising, you know, when you send your ch child over there once a month to stay the night, you know, with their kids and the stuff they're doing in their home, which sometimes you don't even know about, and then your kid, when they turn 25, you know, they, you know, do a Facebook Live talking about how they've struggled with their sexuality because of how many times they were violated at their godmother's house when they were a child. Y'all know everybody different, but we don't play that spin a night stuff. If you're going to spin a night and not spend the night, spin a, S-P-I-N-N-A. -N -N -A. If you're going to play spin a night, you're going to spend the night at our house. Hallelujah, because we don't know who got keys to your house, who got access to your house. But at our house, we're going to watch. We're going to take shifts. Amen. Hallelujah. You got the 9 to midnight shift. You got the midnight to 3 shift. And you're going to sleep in a controlled environment. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Because listen here, some people still struggle with uh, sexual issues today because they were violated when they were a child at someone's sleepover or at someone's house because we entrusted them, uh, you know, to stay there. Amen. Can I just tell you that that is dangerous? You, every person should not be entrusted to take care of your most valuable prized possession. Yeah. I know you need a break. I, we all need breaks. <laughs> One of the things that we used to do when our kids were young uh, was we would, now listen, we would just put them in the van. We had a minivan, and we would just drive through the city until they all fell asleep in the car. Because there were times when, when we lived in Wisconsin, that we didn't have adequate or the right kind of support. We had support, people that would take them, but it wasn't the right kind. And so we were just like, we would rather have keep them <coughs> and do a date when they in the car with us, and we would just drive. And we were looking in the rearview mirror, be like, one down, four to go. <laughs> Another one down, three to go. Another one down, two to go. And we'd be driving this last one, be like, this little joker be trying to stay up. Take your butt to sleep. Turn the heat on back there in the van. <laughs> trying to make them tired. And then, and, then we would, and then we would just park. And we'd go and we'd buy food and sneak back in the car. They all sleep in the back. And we would just, you know, eat at the park with them all in the back. Go down to the lakefront. Milwaukee has a beautiful lakefront, Lake Michigan. We go down to the lake and just eat and just talk and 
have conversation and fellowship, you know, while they were younger. Because, you know, sometimes your village, they don't want to take, especially if you got a big family, they don't want to take all of them together. Amen. Hallelujah. You be trying to drop one here, one there, be like, that's a whole lot of work. Amen. A whole lot of work. Hallelujah. My in-laws, they lived in Michigan at the time, so we would drive to Michigan. Come on, somebody. I don't know if y'all remember this, Mama. As our kids got older, we would drive to Michigan for the holidays, and then we would we were staying for Thanksgiving or whatever, and we would come in the house and we'd say, hey, everybody, and we would have an extra alternate suitcase, <laughs> just a, 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 a mom and dad suitcase in our trunk that we wouldn't bring in the house, and we'd be like, hey, we'll be back. We're about to run an errand. Do y'all need anything? And they were like, no, and we would come back the next day. Come on, somebody. Because <laughs> we, we knew that they was in a safe environment when we dropped them off but they lived in Michigan so we didn't get that all the time so when we went we took full advantage oh my god hallelujah of that opportunity until mom y'all start watching us out the window be like let me check y'all trunk <laughs> make sure y'all ain't got no other bags uh, in there so that that Christ center community is really really important true story in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 it says do not be deceived evil or bad company corrupts good character. Evil or bad company corrupts good character. And so we have to just make sure that we are being mindful of who we allow around our children and who we entrust uh, their care to. Y'all remember, I know this happened to me a lot. My parents would tell me as when I was a teenager, because, you know, teenagers know everything, don't they? They act like you ain't never lived. You ain't never been no teenager or young adults. And my mother and my father would tell me, he trouble. That friend of yours, ain't nothing good about him. Oh, mama, you don't know. Daddy, you don't know. He just, that's my guy. That's my whatever. And you know what they turned out to be? Trouble. That girl, she ain't no good for you, son. She going to break your heart. You don't know. You just judging. You don't know. You don't know. And you know what would happen? Whatever they would say would happen, would eventually happen. Were they prophesying? No, not necessarily, but they have lived experience. Amen? And so it is beneficial to us. We could save ourselves a lot of heartache, a lot of headache, and a lot of pain if we listen to the counsel that God places around us and in our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. Go ahead, honey. I just want to end by sharing uh, a poem, and I feel like it's one of the poems that you can uh, Google, download it, and print it out just as a reminder to yourself that children learn what they live. It's a poem by Dorothy Law Note, and this is, what it, this is how it reads. If children live with criticism, they learn to condemn. If children live with hostility, they learn to fight. If children live with fear, they learn to be apprehensive. If children live with pity, they learn to feel sorry for themselves. If children live with ridicule, they learn to feel shy. If children live with jealousy, they learn to feel envy. If children live with shame, they learn to feel guilty. If children live with encouragement, they learn confidence. If they live with tolerance, they learn patience. If they live with praise, they learn to appreciate. If they live with acceptance, they learn to love. If children live with approval, they learn to like themselves. If children live with recognition, they learn it is good to have a goal. If they live with sharing, they learn generosity. If they live with honesty, they learn truthfulness. If children, children live with fairness, they learn justice. If they live with kindness and consideration, they learn respect. If children live with security, they learn to have faith in themselves and in those that are around them. If children live with friendliness, they learn the world is a nice place to live. Children learn what they live. Amen. And if you would, we're going to go ahead and close this part of the service. If you would stand with me.
as we pray. Father, we just thank you for this day, and we thank you for this moment, Father. We thank you, Father, for the words that have gone forth, God, that they would have uh, pricked hearts, Father, and opened, Father God, minds, Father, to see, Father, how we can raise our babies, these precious babies that you have given to us and told to train. Father, we know that our babies will learn, Father God, what we teach them. And so we're asking, Father, this morning, just for your wisdom, Father, that it would reign supreme and that it would reign, Father God, upon each parent uh, that is here, Father, in our presence this morning. We bless you, Father, and we honor you and just thank you for this time that we have today. I prayed for this child. And the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord. And they worship there. That verse is taken out of 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. As we bow our heads, Father, today we present these children as a gift from these parents who in gratitude, having received their babies from you, now give them back to you. We are mindful this day how the Lord Jesus called the little ones as lambs to his fold, placed his hand of blessing upon their head, threw his arms of love around them, and gave them the kindliest look. We know something of the cravings in the heart of a child. Its innocence is a cry for purity. Its weakness is a cry for strength. Its helplessness is a cry for protection. And its heart is a great plea for love. Father, we ask that you would grant as these children grow, that they will grow in wisdom and that they would grow in favor. We ask that you would preserve them when danger threatens them, that you would undergird them and strengthen them and walk with them, ensuring that at the appropriate time, each one of them will come to know and accept you as their personal Savior through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved, you guys are privileged to witness uh, today the coming of these parents to dedicate their children to the, into the gracious and loving care of God our Father and Christ our Lord. God, grant those uh, that who are gathered here today in worship that they can earnestly assume with these parents the responsibility for these children's Christian training and upbringing inasmuch as all of us shall exercise influence upon these children in some way. If you, the members of Life Changers Church and the community are willing to do so to support these families um, in their quest to uh, raise and train up these godly children, we ask you to pray that these children, uh, for these children that they might be led in years of personal accountability to abhor that which is evil and to cling to that which is good. The scripture reminds us that children are a heritage from the Lord. God entrusts them to us to raise them in the fear of God and in his service. As parents, we must be vigilant from their earliest childhood to stress the importance of God's presence in their lives. This must not only be done by our words, but by our actions. Parents must model their Christian life before their families. We do not believe it is necessary to baptize infants in water because baptism is to follow a choice to give our life to God and ask for the forgiveness of sin. Infants are unable to do either one. God honors their purity, and until they understand the meaning of salvation and personal sin, water is not administered. And few argue the purity of a newborn child. Amen. Uh, I would like to address the fathers just for a moment. Uh, Each dad that's represented here uh, for these children. Uh, To each one of you fathers, uh, the Bible put you in a very unique position to be the priest and the leader of your family. Take this responsibility with great seriousness. No one else can do that for you. Lead your family in prayer and spiritual matters and be a father that your children would want to follow in life and also into heaven. 
At the appropriate time, you will be responsible for making sure that your children understand the plan of salvation so that a clear decision can be made to follow Christ. Follow that decision by assisting your children to grow as a follower of Jesus and as servants of God Most High. And to the mothers, as mothers of these children, it is your responsibility to instruct them in the value of living a pure life before God and before man. It is your duty to maintain purity within your life and within your home as an example of the purity of Christ. The Bible challenges us to live a life without sin and above reproach. Your children will follow what you are far more than what you say. Maintain purity with all of your strength for you are God's representative before your children of his purity and his holiness. Seek God often for help to maintain this standard and to teach it to your children when they are old enough to understand it is only by realizing the meaning of purity that the child will grasp the unholy nature of sin and choose to forsake it. And now to both of the parents. God has a distinct and unique plan for each one of your children. Those plans will be revealed as they continue to grow and develop. You are called upon, you are called upon to help them to understand God's plan and to help them to live in a way that is pleasing to God. Their lives, each one of these children's lives, has been given unto you as a sacred trust. How you handle this trust will affect how their lives unfold. Understand that God expects you to enlist his help to accomplish this joyful task. Day by day, their lives will develop before you. Treat them as the special gift that they are. Well-raised children are a joy to the parents and a blessing to God and society. Their lives are in your hands. Handle it with the care that it deserves. And now, for the address to grandparents, godparents, family, and friends. Each of us have a role to play in the lives of these children. We must include them in our daily prayers. It is important that we assist these parents in their calling to raise godly children. While remembering that these are their children, <laughs> We Emphasis on there. <laughs> we still have the challenge to be an asset to their efforts. Amen. So now, Lord, we present these children to you. You have given them to these parents to represent you in their lives. We ask that you would grant strength and wisdom to, to these parents to make the right choices for their sons and daughters as they grow before you. Help them to raise these little ones to love you, honor you, and fear you. Bring help to them when it is needed. We dedicate each child to you today. May they always follow your word and your leading. Help them to become an example of the Christian faith in their families and community. Let your light shine through their lives. On this day, these families make this commitment to do all within their power to raise their children to serve you. They will offer their protection guidance, help, and hope to them each and every day. Bless them with your presence, unity, and love. We ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen.